two. Vance, could you give me a little brighter spotlight down here, please? Huh? I don't want it real bright, but a little brighter. He didn't hear me anyway. James Allen, could you give me a little bit brighter spot up here? Oh, they have to do the spotlights up there? Oh, I thought they were on those two. He's doing something else for me right now. Yeah, but those were awfully dim. Okay. I've got a headlamp, but I didn't bring it. I, I can go home and get some. No, I, I would use it. It's a bad thing. It's uh, past time to get started, and we got more than we can do if we started on time, so we need to get started. Uh, Brother Steve, would you lead us in a prayer, please? Appreciate you being here. This is the third lesson on coins of the Bible. If you just, uh, did I, I don't have a controller, do I? Just that open scene would be fine. The slide number one. Are your slides numbered up there? Okay, then I'll, I can I can direct you that way without this. Um, if possible we're going to conclude on coins tonight I don't know if you need to do this I, if you shake your Bible at this point coins will probably start falling out of it and and I say that metaphorically because if you've read any in the New Testament since we started this study I have I'm, I'm doing the gospels I, I'm doing four chapters a day and doing, going to do the gospels like three times before I finish every story I see now there are coins in it Money that I knew was there all along because of this emphasis. And I think that will happen to you. It's just, it's just kind of like when you were in the sixth grade and you learned something in one class and you went to another class and you heard the same word for the first time. You might have been hearing it, but you didn't know it. And I, and I think that's what's happening here with the coin. So we've got a lot to cover tonight if we're going to get through with this. And we have some people that are assigned. I missed one of my assigned readers last night and he didn't come tonight, so I heard his feelings. I'm sure that's not why he didn't come, but you can tell him that, okay? But um, and if, if I gave you a, uh, one to read or two to read, that's fine because we're going to need some help. The first coin we'll look at is from, uh, let me see. You just have to scroll down. I said I had them numbered, but I didn't number the first one. It's the widow's mite, the lepton. Keep going, I'll tell you. Keep going. Keep going, keep going. All uh, right, it's actually, uh, if, back it up one, and we can look at, this is, back it up one more. One more? Hello? No, I'm sorry. I thought that was it. Go the other direction. I, I sure missed my little thing, but I don't see it. That, that'll work right there. This is a tiny coin compared to even to a dime. This is a, another version of the lepton, which we call the widow's mite. That one I have up here, and I told you the first night, the one I have is right at 2,100 years old, maybe a little bit older than 2,100, 20, 2,098 to about 2,035, something like that. And it's so thin. I've got it here in plastic, and you can look at it and see if you want to see But it's, if, if people handled it, if this many people handed it around, there wouldn't be much left of it by the time it got through. It's very frail. But that's the coin that we read about in our first lesson tonight. Let's go to the next slide. All right, there's the reverse of it right there. And uh, if you'll go one more slide, I think we can see that that is as another one. That's not the one I have. That's a different widow's mite, but that is one, and it's a little bit actually larger than this one. There, the reverse, both sides of it are showing it next to a U.S. dime. Next slide, please. Uh, okay, you're going to have to go a little further. 
I'll just tell you when to stop. Keep going. One more. One more. That's it. This is called a lepton. It's the widow's mite. And that is basically what's on this. Uh, I think that's an upside down anchor. And this is, this is a star. That doesn't exactly look like this one, but it's shaped very similar to the one that I have. The key passage, and there's a couple of places where this is recorded in Luke 21, but it, the one that we'll start with tonight is Matthew 12, 42 to 44. If I start at the front, that might be you, Sandra. Mark 12, 42 to 44. I stand corrected. And let, let me give everybody, we, we'll turn to these as quickly as we can, but we have several to read, and some of them are long, most of them are not that long. Mark 12, 42 to 44. Two tiny little coins that commentators say you couldn't even, even though it's all she had to live on, you couldn't even get a meal to feed yourself with those two coins. They're just almost nothing. We're going to, we're going to see a, a chart later that compares them, and there's like a really small value coin, and it takes 64 of these to equal that coin. So this is, this is very, very small. Uh, what do we get from that reading? I would like to ask you who you think gave the most, but... I think he said that. This lady gave more. If you, let me ask you, if you were receiving it, would you rather have what she gave or what the other guys gave? <laughs> money, 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 money. Yeah, we, we, in volume, there's nothing. But given on, I, I've tried to think. I mean, I've given when I had to do without some things, but I don't, I don't think I've ever given sacrificially. I know I have it like this. And, and most of our giving is not that way. And yet, this is, this is what she is praised for, giving when, okay. We like to trust how much I'm going to have left. We like to trust what we can see. Well, what, what was she going to have to trust? It was heaven. It was God. Because she gave everything she could look at, everything she could hold in her hands. Uh, any comments about the widow's might? Just about all the time. And, and, and even then, we, we budget and we plan, and that's the way we're told to do it, is to give purposefully. And sometimes when we look at it, we say, well, I, I need to be doing more than I'm doing. But uh, again, I don't, I don't see how that compares exactly with us. But I mean, it's, it's, it's set as an example for us, but I, I, I can't find a time when I think I've done what she did. And there may be people. <laughs> In different places where we've traveled, there may be people that we know of that have done that. But it's still, the idea is that we trust God. Okay, anything else? My parents, where when Dan was born, his, uh, his crib was a drawer. They, they were both in college, and, uh, and I remember them telling me one time that they didn't have anything, so they emptied his piggy bank. And that's what they gave, gave that day. So that, you know, that's pretty close. If you have that heart, don't, things are going to work out pretty good for you. And I think that's the heart that this lady had says a lot for her. Anything else on the widow's mind? Okay. Let's go to uh, slide 16, and then we'll go to 17. Slide 16 first. Okay. Rome, according to the Bible, the next one we study is the denarius, and that is this coin here, the tribute penny. I've got one of these here. Uh, does it look silver, but... This one probably isn't because this is, this is just uh, a replica coin of it, not a very big penny, but it's one of the most powerful lessons in the Bible, the tribute penny. Uh, who's got Matthew 22, 15 to 22? Okay, and uh, before you read that, let me tell you, in Matthew 21 and 22 and in Luke 20, there are two of the most amazing examples of the simplicity and the brilliance of the teaching that Jesus did. In, uh, in Matthew 21, he asked them, John's baptism, was it from heaven or was it from men? When they asked him, what authority are you doing this? So he just turned it around on them. And they couldn't answer that because 
They knew. If they said it's from heaven, he said, why didn't you do it? If they say it's not from heaven, then the people believed, so they were in trouble. Jesus turned that. He didn't argue. He didn't fume. He didn't fuss and fight. He just turned it around on them brilliantly. That's recorded in both Luke 20 and Matthew 21 and 22. Now, this one is just, just a few verses past that in either one of these settings. Uh, Matthew 22, 15 through 22. He stopped him. His his logic, his render I mean, how are you going to ask answer a question about taxes that's going to keep from ticking everybody off? It's going to irritate people. Uh, if you say no, we don't need to pay taxes, then he's in violation of the Roman government. Say so, yeah. Render to Caesar the things which are Caesar, and to God the things which are God. How simple, how brief, how beautiful, how perfect that was. Uh, does someone have Luke 20? I think I signed that one also. Is that yours? Renee, Luke 20, 19 through 26. I didn't, may not have given that one out. The reason I wanted to look, just turn to Luke 20, and I will show you something, and then we can discuss what was, we just heard as well. Um, at the end of it, when he said in verse uh, 25, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar and God the things that are God. And the people were not able in the presence, and they were not able in the presence of the people to catch him in what he said. They thought he would mess up. They couldn't. But listen to the next thing that Luke recorded. But marveling at his powers, they became silent. Soft answer turneth away wrath. Perfect answer, answer can shut, shut up people. They were looking for something they could complain about, they could trap him with. He didn't give it to him, and he answered them perfectly. The tribute penny was a denarius. Okay, um, let's look at the next chart. This is the chart. I told you this, this was actually prepared by Jehovah's Witness organization, but it's got some wonderful things in it. The den denarius, let me see if I, I, can, I can find the denarius. It, Right, right there, okay. It's not the biggest coin of all. This is that lepton, the widow's mite I told you about. It's a half of a quadron, and the, the quadron, it takes four of them to make an asterion, and it takes 16 asterions to make a denarius. So 16, 30, 64, 128 of the widow's mites to equal one denarius. I'm not teaching math, and if that's wrong, you can... Just grade my math skills later. But that's got to be real close. Very minute. But now this, this is significant. This is, this is interesting to, to see that denarius. Um, anybody want to comment? And, and, and again, the details that we're looking at are in the money to help us trigger and remember these things. And I think you'll see that for years to come in your study now that, now that we've gone in depth on this. But the lessons were there all along. And how wonderful. Anybody want to comment on what we read about how Jesus answered this question? Oh, we may be through before break time. Show me the penny. This uh, was uh, the one I showed you is Tiberius Caesar. There were other Caesars. And when you study this, you get uh, four or five different people. You have four or five different Caesars projected that it could have been. There was one actually that had two, two of the Caesars pictured on the reverse and another one on the front. But this one certainly fills the bill as one that could have been in circulation that they would have had at that time. All right. Questions or comments? Sometimes you don't have enough the first time I ask. All right.
We're going to stay on this chart for a while, Bart. In Luke 7, verses 41 through 44, actually, there's a longer story about a lady coming. Uh, it says a sinful lady coming and weeping and anointing Jesus' feet and, and washing his feet with her tears. This is the heart of that story, and this is a story that he told, and he, he brings it back to her at the end, but we're going to take the middle part of it out, and this is called Who Will Love Him More? And this again involves a denari or several denarii, if you will. Luke 7, 41 to 44, if everybody turns to that one. And I was going to write down names as who I gave them to, but who's got Luke? All right. Okay, who's going to love him the most? Who is forgiven the most? That just makes sense. It's a principle. I want, I want to run with that just a little bit. Now, there's a story where we're going to see a lady identified as something very similar to this. I don't think it's the same lady, but there's two more stories like this that we'll see a little bit later on. So um, in the story, one owed 500 denarii, denarii another 50. A denarius was worth about a day's labor. That's the easiest way to relate it to modern times. You could put a dollar value on it, but it makes more sense in that day and age. This is what you got for a day's work, was a denarius. 50 would be about, what, eight weeks, if you did it that way. 500 would be about 80, or you know, a year and a half. Quite a bit of difference in, in how this person feels about being forgiven. The truth is, there's none righteous, no, not one. All who have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And sometimes we hear prayers. You, you ever heard Brother uh, Greg McCullough talk about our, our not deserving God's grace in a prayer? That's real. You can tell that's real when he prays that prayer. Vance, do you remember what song Brother J.B. Walker led more than any other song? He paid a debt he could not, I could not pay. Uh, we regardless of how many sins we've committed. We might have been squeaky clean. Just figure out how many days you lived on earth and put one sin a day and nobody's squeaky clean. And you say, well, I don't do what he, and it, maybe not. But at the same point, we all should feel like the one that, because everything's lifted. Because you know how many, how many sins it takes to keep you out of heaven if they're unforgiven? Greg, at what? How many rotten eggs would it take in a pound cake before you wouldn't want to eat it? Just one. There might be 11 good ones in there. I don't know. They used to put a dozen eggs in something like that. God loves us, and he's forgiven our debt. Sometimes, though, we breeze through life saying, well, I, you know, look at me. I'm good. You're not good. I'm not good. Jesus didn't die for us because everything was okay. Now, I, I understand the lesson here is the contrast. It was obvious one owed a greater debt. But what I'm saying is our debt, regardless of how small it might be compared to someone else, it's too much for us. We can't bear that debt. And that's what we need to learn from, from the lesson. And, um, you know, when you see the humility of people that absolutely learned that lesson, it really encourages us. Comments or questions? I'm preaching. That's okay. I always wondered if you're doing such a great job or a terrible job, they didn't even know how to respond. But we'll, we'll, we'll get on with it. The next one, okay, thank you. Well, he's going to forgive us. Let's keep doing it. No. When we can put ourselves into God so loved me 
that he sent his only son Jesus for it. And when we realized that if I was the only one that needed Calvary, he would have still sent Jesus to die, then, then I think that helps with that problem. But you're right. Sometimes, you know, well, I've never done that. Well, I've never done that. But what have you done? Well, don't want to talk about it, you know. We, we have done some things. So this is, this is a good lesson to take internally, even though he made it clear. I, I, I think part of the lesson there was don't look down on the man who had the bigger debt forgiven. I mean, because your debt was going to put you in prison. Your debt's going to keep you out of heaven eternally. So good points, good thoughts. All right? We're still using the same denarius or a different denarius. We actually get to use two uh, from the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. In verses 25 to 37. And this is, this, uh, I didn't find a way to shorten this. The, the part about the uh, coins is just very brief. But it is part of the story of a man who helped and of some who didn't. Who's got a, who did I give the card to in Luke 10, all right? You may have randomly helped somebody that you didn't know, and I, I know there are people in here that I would expect to do that. But to think about somebody like this, he'd been bypassed by the ones that supposedly should care, and then this man, who we would consider dogs or le less than dogs in the culture of that time, a Samaritan, and he helped him. Remember, we valued the denarius at a day's wages, so... He, he gave what would amount to two days' wages for his covering at, at the, the local Motel 6 or whatever it was. And then he said, and if there's more, I'll pay that when I get back. So this is really a good thing to do, but it, it's kind of amazing. Comments on that? Anybody got any thoughts about that? I like the word neighbor in there. I, I've got the Mr. Roger sweater going tonight, so I could, would you be my neighbor? I, I, I'm not going to change into my tennis shoes, so don't worry about that. But uh, who is his neighbor? Do we know our neighbors anymore? There was a time when we knew every one of our neighbors. There's a time when, you, yeah, you know all yours, right? <laughs> oh, I thought you meant you didn't have any. Go ahead. Can you do a little more? <laughs> Can you walk a little closer? And, and, and sometimes, you know, we hear those lessons and we kind of say, well, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> but...
I'm, I, and I might have priced those new golf clubs before I gave <laughs> that thousand just to, just to see. I, mean, I might not have, but I might have. Um, okay. 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 That, that's excellent. Anything else? Excellent point. Anything else? Um, I think about one little side lesson I get from this. It's, um, you know, we can talk a good game all day long, but it's not what you say, it's what you do. And I came up with another old saying, uh, you know, here were two very religious people that went by, and I don't know the, where this term originates, but you ever heard put your money where your mouth is? where their profession was, they were helpers and probably felt pretty good about themselves and maybe should have. But, you know, if we miss the people that are hurting in our professions of righteousness, then we just need to reevaluate because there are people that are hurting. If you don't believe that, pray. Go home when you get home tonight and pray for somebody to help. <laughs> you might want to be very short with that prayer because there are people that need help. Sometimes it's just our eyes that need to be open and our hearts. To, to see that. The Good Samaritan. Anything else? All right. Used about two thirds of our time and we're nearly halfway through. We're going. The next lesson is the passage from Luke 12, verse 6. It's also very similarly worded in Matthew 10, 29. We're just going to read Luke 12, verse 6 about the five sparrows. King James would say farthings. Actually, this is the Assyria coin. This is this one right here. And again, uh, two of those would be worth quite a few of those widows' mites. But five sparrows are told are sold for two. What was that last part? What was the last part of that verse say about the sparrows? They're not forgotten for God. The King James uh, is a little bit different on that. And then and it said, and it doesn't say quite as much as I wanted to say. One, one I found said, are not, they don't follow the ground without the Father's consent. In other words, he watches. He knows. He knows what happening happens to those. Uh, any of you feed birds? Now's a good time to feed them. How many sparrows, doves, and other things do you have uh, if you put some just, just some wild bird feed out? Oh, they're lined up. It's almost like they have to have a flight path to get in to, to land of those. And, and they come, they expect that. God knows that things have needs, and he's not talking about birds here. He's talking, God knows the things that we need. We need, we need to consider that. We, we need to understand that God goes our needs. And we need in, in our abundance, in our what we have, we need to have those same kind of thoughts. Anything else? This is just a brief one. I like the bird references. You may, does anybody besides me remember the sermon that Vance did with the two dead birds? You remember that, don't you? 
Well, I, I won't forget that lesson. And, and they both committed suicide, right? Flew into the glass out here, and one was a hawk, and one was what, a sparrow? Humminbird. Oh, it wouldn't have been much meal for that hawk, but he was chasing him and didn't realize what was, he was heading into because it looked like a clear place to pass. Uh, it's not saying that, that, you know, God knows in nature that there are things like that and that nature sometimes has to feed off other nature. But I think the detail, if he can be focused on things that minutely, how about us? It even says, you know, and some of us are making it easier now. He know, our hairs are numbered. It's not maybe not as big a number as it once was. And, you know, maybe not the same color, but he, he knows. Wonderful, wonderful lesson of the five spares and two fathers. All right, let's go continuing with the denarius, uh, John 6, 5 through 7, and this is also told in a longer form in Mark 6. We're just going to look for the heart of this. This is out of the feeding of the 5,000. And if you remember the scene, this crowd had been hearing Jesus, and it was getting dark. It was getting time for them to have something to eat. And Jesus poses this little question about feeding them. He knows what he's going to do. But the, the sum of 200 denarii come up. Who, who had John 6, 5 through 7? All right, let, let me catch up with you, and you can start reading. I'll, I'll get there. Uh, read the next verse. I'm sorry. All right, and that's 200 in there. It might be pocket change, but again, that's 200 days of wages. So that's a pretty good sum for 5,000 people to get to feed them. I don't know. Today, that, that may still sound about right if you did the math. Um, 200 in there. That was a problem with Peter, and he said, and they're just going to just, just gonna get a taste, just going to get started. And Jesus knew what he's going to do, but again, it shows concerns. It shows that Jesus is so much more powerful, and his, his limits, they're not limits. His abilities far out exceed. There's a verse that says that, he is, that God is able to do even more than we can ask. Can you do more than your children ask you to do? <laughs> Probably not. And or imagine. God can do more than we can imagine. You think any of those guys that first time, and apparently they didn't remember it the next time, you think any of them knew what Jesus was going to do, had an inkling? They'd already seen some signs, but they didn't know that Jesus was going to take a small lunch and multiply it and have fragments left over. Amazing, amazing story. 200 denarii. Again, the emphasis is on what happened and not how much it cost. Sometimes, you know, we have to realize that. If, it, if, it's, if it's a good purchase, just it's not, not the cost that matters, but sometimes it is the cost that matters to us on budgets. All right? Anything else? In uh, Mark 18, there's one we're going, we're going to read. Uh, Mark 18, this is a rather lengthy one. This is about the unforgiving servant. Mark 18... Excuse me, Matthew 18. Matthew and Mark are confusing me tonight. But I've got, I've got my little scribblings down. Matthew 18, 21 to 35, the parable of the unforgiving servant. Give you a little bit of time to get there, and then we'll have a couple of follow-up verses in a minute. Okay? Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and, for, and forgive me? Up to 70 times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to 70. But up till seventy times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he had begun to settle them, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought in. But since he did not have the means to pay, his lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children, all that he had, and repayment to be made. So the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him. Him say, Have patience with me, I will repay you everything. And the Lord of the slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. But that slave went on and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. He seized him, began to choke him, saying, 
paid, paid back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, Have patience for me, I will repay you. But he was unwilling and went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what was up. So when the fellow slave saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved, and they came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all the debt you had. You pleaded with me. Should you not also forgive and have mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger, handing him over to the uh, torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. The Heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you do not forgive his brother from your heart. Okay. Uh, one, one man owed a hundred denari, denarius, and that's this one again. Uh, that, again, was equal to a day's wages, so a hundred days labor, several weeks. Quite a, quite a sum of money. That's not a light sum of money. Up here you see a talent, and you see the miner. We've got another one that mentions the miners. There you've got a pile of money equaling, showing how many miners it would take to, to form a talent. I sat there in my head figuring that thing out. I came up with six million. Okay. And, and, uh, and, but yet the denario was two days, I mean the draft was two days wages, so I would assume that would be three million days. Well, let's see. I, I, 60, 60 minus times 100 being 100 drops. I mean, the talent being 60 minus, a minus, minus was 100 drops. Well, that's 60 times 100, that's 6,000. Okay. And then then a, if you drop down, uh, I mean, if you say that's 6,000 drops, well, a drop was uh, equal to, uh, I forgot what numbers that. That's the drop. Right there, that's that's sick. Our drop drop was two, two day. I mean, two days wages. So it wouldn't be. I, I was measuring over here somewhere. But you'd take six thousand. I guess it'd be three thousand days wages. And and up and this one, it says that a talent was about twenty years wages. That's different from the numbers I had and yours. And again, these are not going to be exact because of the way they're converted in different ways. But what I've got is 100 days wages compared to uh, 10,000 talents and a talent as a year's wage. So 10,000 years wages is going to be close to where you were. That's going to be close to where you were. In other words, something he's not ever going to be able to pay off. And he was forgiven it. We're going to have to stop at this point, but I got two two more verses. Who's got Matthew five seventeen and six twelve? These, if you'll flip back to Matthew five seventeen, I think you're going to get the lesson that we learned from the unforgiving servant. And if you can get it now, it's a whole lot better than getting it at judgment. You're right. I've got it written down here. I wrote it down wrong here again, but it is Matthew five seven. All right, blessed are the merciful. Isn't that kind of the heart of this lesson? You're going to, be, you, you're going to make him, you're going to put him in jail for a little bit? Uh-uh, that's not the way it's going to work. And uh, Matthew 6, 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. Ooh. See, we want people to forgive our debts. And we want God to forgive our sins. And then we act self-righteous, sanctimonious. We, we demand that everything be paid in full with interest. I mean, it's an attitude adjustment. We're going to have to drive a peg in there so we didn't get through tonight. But we'll, we'll conclude this next time, hopefully, and, and then go, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your questions. And, you know, the blank looks. I'm sure I generated those. But, 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 but I'm, it's, good, it's good to see. But you'll be dismissed now for a few minutes. I didn't even get to use the guy carrying the stuff in Burma, the Burmese guy that's sitting there.
I think it's time for us to start. We appreciate so much your presence tonight. If you're a visitor, we're certainly glad that you've come to be with us. I know there's still some in the other end of the building, but our number's down quite a bit. Uh, it's almost who does not have COVID on our announcements instead of who has it uh, because there's so much of it right now. Uh, on our sick list, uh, Teresa Posey, we just continue to thank the Lord and rejoice that her tests came back good and uh, there was no cancer at all. The uh, doctor wants her to be assigned to a, maybe a urologist in Birmingham, but uh, that was just all good news. Um, Kenneth Whittemore is out of the hospital. We're thankful for that. Alan Hatcher has two more days of his treatments, I think, and he'll wind up, should wind up Friday. And, you know, when you do that, you get to ring the bell. And uh, so we hope he'll get to ring the bell Friday. Um, Reba Gower, Reba is, uh, she didn't have a good dialysis today, I don't think, maybe two-thirds or something, maybe half. And uh, so maybe Friday will be better. Uh, if you can uh, take her down or bring her back, uh, if someone would like to do that, we can sign up. Uh, I think that is still open for Friday. Uh, next uh, Tuesday, uh, Richard Sargent will have his uh, back surgery, and that will be at Jasper. Bokeh, Willadine, Terrell had a PET scan on Monday, and I think we'll hear from that Friday, I believe. And uh, Vicki Perry, uh, Vicki suffered a stroke over the weekend, and uh, she is now home. I uh, don't think they could find a, a rehab place that maybe fit her insurance or something. And, uh, but she's walking. Okay. I think Katie, Katie is here. Katie has flown in and, and uh, will be with her for at least a few days. Uh, Lynn Kershaw, I don't believe Lynn's with us tonight. Lynn is still struggling. And Lynn's just been pretty sick for about a month. Uh, Brother Freddie Myers is uh, still getting some better, I think, and hopefully might, he might be with us Sunday. Uh, Janie Baldy, uh, Janie is some better, uh, but she's just uh, afraid to get out right now. Uh, Libby Sterling, I think Libby will be with us on Sunday. Randy Harbin, uh, it was thought uh, yesterday that Randy may have suffered another stroke, and uh, he was taken to UAB Hospital uh, late yesterday evening. And, uh, but he did return home this morning about 4 o'clock, and the doctor said he did not have a stroke, and that's good. If they thought maybe there was a little piece of plaque that may have broken away, and uh, so we hope that doesn't cause something else in the future. But uh, he was having uh, some symptoms of almost like a stroke and was carried to the hospital. Wayne Bass, uh, Wayne's a tough little fella and uh, he doesn't hardly miss work for anything but he's missed a couple of days work and his uh, fever has been like 102.9 and uh, so uh, uh, but I don't think he has COVID and uh, but he and Gina are not with us and we're not with us uh, I thought they were here on Sunday morning but they were not uh, please continue to remember uh, Van Roberts and uh, Christy White uh, as they struggle with their cancer on our COVID list tonight, and I'm sure I don't know everybody uh, that has COVID that's associated with the church here, uh, but Marcus and Deneen Wires and their two daughters, uh, not Tiffany, but the other two girls, and uh, Jana. Jana did get, to, not everybody now that wants an infusion can get one, uh, but Jana did get an infusion Monday, and uh, she is a very high risk uh, patient anyway, and she did get an infusion Monday. And we're thankful for that. But uh, Danny went back to work, I believe, today. And uh, Jerrica will be eligible to go back to work Saturday. And uh, please remember all three of those, and they're all at Janice and Jerry's house. Uh, talked to Jerry, uh, I guess, yesterday. And he said he had not been out of his bedroom in three weeks. I told him, I said, well, climb out the window. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, though I'd be getting cabin fever, I guess, but uh, he sounded pretty good on the phone. Justin uh, tested positive yesterday uh, for COVID, and uh, Sister Christine George, I believe this is, is this her third time? I want to think this is her third time uh, to have it, and uh, but she tested positive Monday, 
and uh, that put her and uh, Jeff's mother, Catherine Cole, in quarantine. And uh, so please remember uh, Christine especially. Uh, David Moon, this would be uh, Linda's son-in-law. David Moon's sister is quite ill in the hospital with COVID. And I uh, don't know where Randy, uh, Randy and Linda are not with us tonight, and I'm not uh, knowledgeable of, of why. Uh, Tammy Harbin, I know this is Tammy's third time to have COVID. And uh, Tammy tested positive uh, yesterday. And uh seemed like this one is affecting her more maybe than the others. I think Amy Scott's sister, Paula, has COVID. And uh, so uh, there's just lots of it around. Greg McCuller, uh, Greg tested positive yesterday. Uh, Jeremy Blevins, I think, tested positive yesterday. And uh, Nancy Gurley. Nancy was actually hospitalized uh, uh, overnight, I guess. And, uh, but uh, they thought she had a blood clot along with COVID. And, uh, but she is quite a bit better today. And uh, she is home. Uh, any other COVID? Do we know of any other COVID patients? So that's a pretty good many. Please remember all of our shut-ins and those in the nursing homes, and you have a list of those, and I hope that you will pray for them. Who did? Kim Myers. Kim Myers. Well, well. Well, well. Thank you that were able to donate blood today, or if you came and tried to donate blood and maybe could not, thank you so much for that. I think there were 13 uh, units of blood that were given. And uh, maybe next time, I mean, it's just turned out to be not so good a day today because of all the COVID and other things. Uh, but maybe next time uh, we can push it a little harder and, and uh, get up there around 40 or 50. Uh, but we're thankful for those who did. Uh, we have folks that uh, they know up front that they're going to probably get sick out of this deal or get weak. And uh, Sister Noma was one of them. Noma was one of the first ones that gave today. And, and uh, she had a pretty hard time kind of getting back on her feet, but she's here with us tonight. And uh, there are others of you. I know uh, Scott and Don and, and uh, Katie and uh, others of you that may have given Sandra gave today. And uh, so, is that thunder? Um, Thank the ones that work for the Meals on Wheels. That was done yesterday. And uh, next week, we will be back on course on Wednesday. And uh, ladies' Bible class will be this coming uh, Sunday night. And I have a note uh, to read. It says, the ladies' food groups have been reassigned. And you can pick up a copy of those in the lobby. If you did not sign the list to be on a group, and you want to, Please see Teresa, and she will add you to a group. The preacher's luncheon will be this coming Monday, and uh, it may be abbreviated. I don't know. <laughs> uh, folks may be afraid, but right now I sent out 52, I believe it's 52 invitations uh, to area preachers, and uh, that's a lot of preachers, and they eat a lot of chicken. And uh, so I know you ladies always do, and you'll do a great job with a meal on, on Monday. Uh, but we have, we actually, there'll be five, you know, I hesitate to ask five preachers to speak uh, and, and, and plan to be out in an hour and a half. Uh, but we do have uh, Mark Posey, uh, Ted, to do what? Yeah, we will make it too. Mark Posey and uh, Ted Burleson and Levi Sides and uh, James Wires and Ken Johnson will be the five speakers. Uh, that will be speaking on Monday. And um, we have some topics. I've uh, entitled this Preacher's Luncheon, Avoiding Self-Destruction. And uh, there's some topics that are very, very much needed uh, to be discussed. The Gus Nichols uh, School of Biblical Studies, as I said Sunday, we had 41 students, uh, about twice what I expected. And uh, so tomorrow night we will meet at 6 o'clock and if you would like to ride together, if you'll let me know if some of you want to go, we will leave here about five or five after five. I know I've got one that's supposed to show up here tomorrow uh, coming from Florence and uh, to ride with us to kind of break off about 50 miles of his trip. The uh, men's day at Winfield will be a week from Saturday, 
And on that same day, there's a ladies' day at Midway. The Fried Hardeman lectures will be on um, February the 6th through the 11th, and it looks like it is a full slate this year. And uh, with no strings attached is right now the plan. That may change. And then there will be a men's day at East Walker. Uh, well, East Walker men's day, I can remember Brother Jim Posey many years going to that, Brother Lacey Whitfield and Brother Tom Edwards, we would all go to that. And really enjoyed it. They always have breakfast. They don't serve lunch. They serve breakfast. They start out eating, and then we have the meeting afterward. That will be on February the 19th. Uh, Brother Ryan Spann, if you would, if you'll take your father-in-law's place. Uh, Brother Philip Barnett was the leader of opening prayer. Brother Scott Horsley was the leader of closing prayer. And I'm going to ask your daddy, Brother Frank, to lead us in our closing prayer. And I believe the rain has set in. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day that you've given us. We're so mindful of the blessings that you've given us this day. We pray that we would always seek to find the blessings that you bestow upon us each and every day. We're so mindful of this time, of this long list of people that have been mentioned as sick or shut in or struggling. We pray for those that were mentioned. We pray for the doctors, the nurses that tend to them. Pray that you'd bless them. Pray that you would be with those that have COVID. This, uh, this is, uh, has been a struggle for our society, for our nation, for our world for the past uh, year or so. And we're so mindful of the, the stress that is put on families the, and the losing loved ones. We're so mindful of those that have lost loved ones through COVID. And we pray that you would bless them and comfort them. Pray that they would look to your word. Pray that they would look to their fellow Christians for comfort as well. We're mindful at this time of our elders and our deacons that serve here. We're so grateful to them and for the example that they set before us. We pray that you would continue to bless them as they make decisions, as they try to look out for the betterment of our church family here. And we're so mindful of them and, and the work that they've done and the work they continue to do. We pray that you would be with us this night as we begin our, uh, as we continue our services. Pray that we could rid our mind of things that are of this world, that we, while we're here, we would solely devote our time to you and to worshiping you and to uh, meditating on the words that we hear, meditating on the songs that we sing. And we pray that we would be encouraged and uplifted and pray that much good could come from us being here. We're so grateful to you for your grace and your mercy, and we know we don't deserve any of those things as we're, we see in each and every day. But we're so grateful to you for allowing us to have that opportunity to receive those blessings if we continue to live in accordance with your word. We pray that you would bless us this night. We're so grateful for Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross for our sins, him being the perfect sacrifice. We're so grateful to him and his love that he's shown, that he come down to this earth and left heaven and died for us. Pray that we could always live up to glorifying him and pray we would do that each and every day forgive us when we fail you and all these things we ask in Christ's name amen
Song 389 will be the invitation song in just a moment. There's a word, and you probably know what it means, and it's universalism. Applied to Christianity, universalism teaches that all people will be saved. You think about that. There, there are people that believe that. There, there are churches that were even called universalist churches at one time. Uh, they've kind of merged with the uh, Unitarian Church. Uh, but just think about that thought for a minute. When you think about uh, universalism, it, it's, it's illogical. Is good and evil, are they on a parallel? Is it irrelevant whether you're good or whether you're bad? You say, well, sure, it makes a difference. Universalism is illogical. Number two, universalism is a reflection on the justice of God. Is there no difference between Jezebel and Job? Think about it. You know, for God to be just, there has to be a difference between a Jezebel and a Job. Number three, universalism contradicts explicit testimony of Scripture. I've always thought that about a lot of things, like once saved, always saved. But universalism is, is maybe even more so uh, than once saved, always saved. Luke 13, 24, Strive to enter in the straight gate, for many shall seek to enter in and shall not be able. Matthew 7, 13, 14, Enter ye into the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. Matthew 25, verse 46, And these shall go away into everlasting destruction, and the righteous unto life eternal. So universalism is illogical. It's a reflection upon the justice of God, and it contradicts explicit testimony of scriptures. And you say, well, why would anybody teach that and believe that? Only thing I can come up with is wishful thinking. Wishful thinking. You know, there's a lot of things that fall in the category of wishful thinking. From a student who's not studying at all to thinking he's going to pass a course, make a good grade, and you, teacher, might say, well, that's wishful thinking. Well, it's just a human illusion. It is wishful thinking. It's not Bible, universalism. There are a lot of other things that fall in that category, uh, like once saved, always saved, and other things. But God wants you to be saved, and God has made provision for all people to be saved. His son's sacrifice is ample, to save the sins of the world, yours and mine, no matter, as John said, how many they are or how in great depth they are. The Lord would have all to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. Folks have to come to a knowledge of the truth and then they have to obey truth. You might be here tonight and uh, you need to render obedience to the gospel or to return to your Lord. And it's our prayer that you would as together we stand and as we sing.
Thank you so much for being with us tonight. We appreciate so much your presence. Hope you'll be with us on the Lord's Day. Uh, we had a real low attendance last Sunday, but folks were doing the best they could. Uh, but let's try real hard, to everybody that can be here, and encourage someone else to come and to be with us on the Lord's Day. We want to get that number back well into the 120s if we can on Sunday. Um, Brother Frank Horsley will lead us in our closing prayer. I meant to mention, and I know that they just went home and fell down on their knees and thanked God that uh, their little great-granddaughter, uh, Reagan, some of you know and probably all of you knew that she was hit by a car. She was actually a pedestrian hit by a car uh, after school one day last week and uh, was taken to the hospital and spent all the evening, came home late that night. Uh, but just thank God that, I mean, it could have, it could have been so, so different. And uh, I, just, I just know that they, they fell on their knees and thank God that she was okay. Brother Frank will lead us in our closing prayer and we hope to see you on the Lord's Day.